just a um, very quick question. Um, in, in your studies, did you, did you ever study how blind people think uh, uh, spe special? Uh, how, how is the, the, the special, the you spatial, mean, spatial thinking of blind people? Uh, oh, did we ever study blind? I have not, but um, that's a very interesting question. Some pe Barbara Landau has. Um, this, there's actually a really interesting debate, and it gets to these really fundamental core issues in developmental psychology about the, how much are we open to experience and what, what are we born with. So some people claim that we're born with the basic ability to form cognitive maps, and it doesn't depend on visual experience, that it can be formed through other kinds of tactile experiences. And Landau, many years ago, showed that a blind child could use a map to find a hidden toy. Other people have said that, on average, this is not, there, there definitely are deficits, and it's not as easy for blind people. But certainly, we can do a lot to facilitate it. And there have been very creative uses of alternate sensations. So like, with this GPS and GIS, uh, some of the geographers at University of California, Santa Barbara, created a system where the um, buildings on campus call out their names to you with increasing volume as you approach it, you know, like Park Hall, Park Hall, Park Hall, Sims Hall, Sims Hall. And people were actually able to form an orientation based upon that. So this is an area of open controversy. As far as scientific, pro a second more general equitable access issue is making uh, these kinds of experience available for those who have sort of different sensory repertoires. There is, in fact, another science of learning center, not for the blind, but for the, that's specifically devoted to the deaf and bringing these new technologies. And, and we should not restrict anyone to the advantages that we have. So I'm not giving you a yes or no answer. It's a, as you, it's a really core question. It gets to the very heart of some developmental psychology issues. I don't know. <laughs> anyone? Yeah, go ahead. Very, very, very good question. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> Yeah, I know, I'm thinking. Yeah, I can't I'm right behind you. Okay. Beside you. Going all the way back to 74, um, Jacqueline, who was it? Um, Eleanor Maccabee and Jacqueline did this sort of informal meta-analysis of all the research on sex differences. And this mental rotation of three-dimensional figures was one of four where uh, there was a pretty reliable, stable sex difference. So, uh, in adults. In, in, well, it actually has been demonstrated as far now all the way back to infancy. So this one may be, now I should say on many other measures, uh, women exceed. It's not just all spatial members, it's measures either. So this mental transformation, men excel. But if we look at memory for patterns laid out um, on a table, like if I put a whole bunch of junk, this is what? Thank God I'm married to a woman, although, you know, it's okay to be married to a man. Um, <laughs> um, I, my, um, I always have to ask my wife where I put something, and she has, like, a very visual memory of the details of it. So there do seem to be some text difference, but it's not as simple as who's good and who's bad. And second, and this is going back to Larry Summers, the, for, the now former president of Harvard and also the former advisor to Obama, but there's a lot of former things. Um, he, um, he basically was saying that, that biological differences in spatial ability could account for the differences in, in gender representation in science. And the difference is nowhere that big, and there's so many other kinds of factors. And so it may not be totally a stereotype, but it may not matter very much. Uh, you can um, reduce the sex difference substantially, um, but what, I think things that matter are much more like interest and engagement and those are the real reasons why women don't go into STEM, not cognitive abilities. You know, boys are at risk cognitively for just from the start. I mean, they do worse at almost everything else. I don't know why we focus on turning blocks over your head. Like reading is a tremendous advantage for girls. And that never gets mentioned. But. Can I just ask something? Yes. Uh, is, that, is that true for, for several countries? Because, for instance, in the PISA test, um, most countries, the boys go better than the girls in math, but in some countries, it's the opposite. Oh, you yeah. heard about Singapore, you, you mentioned that. That, yeah. that is shown in the PISA 
Also, uh, I was talking to you earlier that the socioeconomic status also, that changes, the, the, the gap changes. With yes. the low level of uh, SES, this gap doesn't appear. So that's another. So how yeah. to explain that? <laughs> this is a fascinating finding that the, that the tr so called traditional male advantage does not appear in low SES environments. And that gets into this fascinating interaction between biology broadly construed and environment. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, I think that in the United States, and correct me if I'm wrong, but girls do better in math at least to eighth grade and possibly now all the way through high school. Uh, it, it's generally speaking, girls do pretty well at most academic subjects relative to the boys. It's, um, it's more executive control problems and things like that. So, you know. Not in the PISA, they, they, they do worse. They, in the U.S. In the U.S., right. girls did worse. I didn't. Yeah, there's a difference between the grades they receive yeah. in response on standardized tests. So the girls <laughs> definitely get higher grades than boys, but we all can understand why teachers would rather teach cooperative students than boys who are acting out. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, but it's also an existence proof that these so-called biological differences don't have to play out in something. The grades matter. Not how you did on a test, I think. I, think. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a, a psychometric test. Anyone else? Thank you. Oh, no. and yeah, I was yeah. wondering about, do you, do you have experience in designing uh, games for, what, what's the youngest age that you're doing? I mean, do you do uh, I, or? Yeah, no, um, Yes, um, I'm not, but there are, there are actually, um, was it Alejandro? The, the, your, what he was talking about um, at the very end there, we had the solid objects and the tablet. Uh, there is other work like that. There's a game called Tigley uh, where you can f anticipate spatial arrangements and it's sort of interacting between blocks and cubes and the screen. And I think for younger kids, that's going to be absolutely critical. For t and I, that point you made about not knowing real physics is, is just blowing me away. So, it's, it's really, um, so there are some people going back at least to four. Um, it's on my agenda of one of the things I want to do, but there's some, that would be definitely a room for collaboration because I personally don't have the technological skills. We, I've been working with Apple a little bit, but writing, Apple has extremely restrictive ways to write software and, it, and it's hard to make it work and you have to, you know, don't start with app, with iPad, is my advice to you, uh, unless you're a really good Apple-certified programmer. You should go to, to uh, Seattle instead of Cupertino, California. Okay, um, can I just borrow your computer? I, I want to project um, our website. Yeah. Just, just a short uh, sales pitch. We, these people are here today, the researchers that, that spoke, because they came to our symposium we organized that happened the day before and on Sunday. That's a, that was a satellite event to the Ibromedi International Brain Research Organization. So the symposium was a science for education symposium. And the symposium was organized, I just want to let you know about this uh, network we are organizing in Brazil of scientists whose uh, work are somehow related to uh, learning and education. So okay. it's the national... Oh, it Chrome yeah. wants to take over my National uh, Science for Education Network. So, so the idea, we, we just sorry. launched our website last Saturday. So <laughs> there's not a lot of things there, but uh, pretty soon we're going to have the videos from the lectures that uh, were given at the symposium the, day, the two days before, and many other materials that might be interesting to teachers and uh, people working at schools or scientists who are interested in, in maybe converging to that area, exciting the, area of research. Did they find it? It's in Portuguese. Uh, for, now, for now, it's in Portuguese. Uh, Can I? Yeah. That's okay. Thank you. Oops. Too many W's. Thank you all for Oops, how do I make this disappear? Make what disappear? This.
Oh, I, I never, I haven't figured that out yet. Okay. So, yeah, there's the website, uh, cienciapareducacion.org. So uh, I, I will welcome you to, to, to look at the page and see what's going on on that. Okay? Thank you. Sorry.